Karen Louise Wilson was born on the 2nd of February 1963. Throughout high school, the popular student was a cheerleader, and after high school, she aspired to have a career in the Foreign Service. Karen was currently a senior studying political science at the University of Albany in Albany, New York, and was also a State Assembly intern. On Wednesday of March the 27th, 1985, 22 year old Karen Louise Wilson was out shopping to prepare for an upcoming spring break trip in four days to Fort Lauderdale, Florida with her roommate. Karen visited the Colony Centre and bought a red and blue t shirt. She also made an appointment at the Tanning Hut. However, her name was not checked off and no one at the salon remembers seeing her there. It was expected after this shopping trip that Karen would be back to her dorm that night. However, she would never make it home. As the initial investigation begun, investigators initially believed Wilson got on a bus near the Butcher Block restaurant on Central Avenue and took that to Fuller Avenue, but it was later determined that she could not have gotten on the bus and probably walked to Fuller Avenue instead. Witnesses told authorities that she was spotted there shortly afterwards. As the investigation continued and nothing stood out in her personal life that could explain her sudden disappearance, the case quickly took the frightening turn that Karen had probably been abducted. Authorities believe she was probably abducted somewhere near the Six Mile Waterworks. The Six Mile Waterworks is located half a mile from the sunny Albany campus nestled in a wooded area. The night was very dark and the road was not heavily travelled and it would have been possible for a man to pull her into a vehicle in a matter of seconds without having any witnesses. A weird man was spotted in the vicinity around the time Wilson vanished. He has not been identified and he's been sought for questioning as a witness if not a suspect in Karen's disappearance. None of the items Karen was carrying, including a grey fabric pocketbook, a blue nylon wallet with a Velcro closure, a green and white plastic bag from ups and down, and possibly a blue backpack with a yellow dress have ever been found. Wanting to keep every avenue open, police did look into the possibility that Wilson had possibly travelled to Florida after her disappearance like she planned to, but found no evidence that she ever left New York. During the investigation, police followed up on numerous persons of interest, but many had alibis that checked out. They followed many tips of areas that may contain human remains. They searched a wooded area with cadaver dogs for three months, near an abandoned golf course called Tall Timbers Country Club. Investigators also searched the wooded area by the Six Mile Waterworks. According to an article in TimesUnion.com, another theory was Karen was abducted near or in the actual parking lot to her dorm room. Investigators ran a recreation of an abduction scenario in a parking lot and timed it. The time it took for a bigger man to single-handedly abduct a petite woman was only 10 seconds. One possible suspect in Karen's disappearance was serial killer Jeffrey Williams. He had a long history of sexual violence against women who he sees as vulnerable. On the 23rd of January 1988, 18-year-old Carolyn Lonzak was working in New York at a group home for mentally disabled adults. Williams decided to steal a TV from the group home and ended up taking Carolyn in the process of it. Her body was found later frozen, strangled and stabbed three times at the Tom Hannock Reservoir. Investigators found physical evidence linking him to the killing. A tiny spider medallion he always wore around his neck was found outside the group home and investigators believed 
Carolyn pulled it off while fighting for her life. He was finally put away for life in 1995. Another name that was investigated was Brad Woodworth, who was a 33-year-old truck driver in 1985. He became a person of interest several months into the investigation. After an anonymous caller gave authorities Woodworth's address and told detectives to investigate him. It was such a strange and specific tip that we pursued it, said authorities. Woodworth's alibi checked out after his boss vouched that he arrived for his shift at 4am as usual on March the 28th 1985. If he did take Karen the night before at 8pm it just didn't seem possible that he'd report to work at 4am the next morning. Interest in Woodworth faded after this. That interest was revived about a year later when another anonymous caller told investigators to look for Wilson's body in a wooded area near the abandoned Tall Timbers Country Club off Maple Road, close to Woodworth's house on Hilton Road. Woodworth died in a house fire in 2013. Then, in 1998, almost 13 years later, Karen's case would be thrust into the spotlight once again, when another sunny Albany student would disappear in similar circumstances. On the night of March the 2nd, 1998, 20-year-old Suzanne Lyle left her job at the Babbage's in Crossgates Mall in the nearby suburb of Westmere. She is believed to have taken a city bus from the mall back to the university's uptown campus, where a classmate has said she saw Lyle get off the bus at Collins Circle, a short walk from her dorm. She's never been seen again. Strangely, Suzanne's card has been used to withdraw $20 from an ATM at Stewart Shop's convenience store in Albany at approximately 4pm the day after she disappeared. The store unfortunately did not have cameras pointing to the actual ATM, so it couldn't be confirmed who made that withdrawal. The proximity in which the two girls disappeared forced many, including the police, to ponder if there was any connection between the two cases. Unfortunately, much like Karen's case, the disappearance of Suzanne quickly went cold. As of 2023, both Karen's case and that of Suzanne Lau both remain unsolved. <laughs>